This video is brought to you by Skillshare. You. Yeah, you. Did you know that between your air conditioner, your fancy car and those RGB lights on your new computer, you were responsible for 5 kilograms of carbon dioxide emission just today? I'll omit the stats on methane out of respect for your privacy. But he who smelt it dealt it. Look, here's the situation in brief. The world is enveloped in a warm blanket of carbon dioxide. And just by existing and having a few minor indulgences, you're making the blanket thicker and thicker. It's already thick enough that left unchecked, the earth is only going to get hotter and hotter until many parts of the world become uninhabitable, unfit for cultivation and inhospitable to all life except cold-blooded snakes and lizards. Do you really want to be responsible for the emergence of godlike, universe-subjugating, reptilian beings spoken of in legends? Well, that does sound kind of cool. Okay, scratch that. Looks like reptiles are goners too. Point is, warmth, bad. Cool, good. What do? The obvious solution is a grid based on electricity. You go grocery shopping in your electric vehicle, come back and switch on your electricity-powered air conditioner, switch on your electricity-powered induction to fry up the electric eels you got for a steal. Everything powered by the solar panels on your roof. And maybe a windmill you put up when you feel a draft. Like, admit it, that's the dream. Everyone from environmentalists who write songs about the sun and wind to super independent off-grid freedom types want that to happen. But sorry, I'm going to have to repeat something that renewable advocates are sick of hearing. The sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow, and when that happens, we have to spin up natural gas turbines, which are better than coal but still blanket thickeners. To continue the increasingly labored analogy. Anyway, we need to figure out a way to store that mysterious dance of electrons and fields in order to build our futuristic utopia. We've covered ways to do this extensively on this channel. From lithium-ion batteries made cheap by economies of scale, to lower on the battery tech iceberg and Donald Sadoway's liquid metal batteries. But here's something for you to chew on. According to the research by Jessica Transic out of MIT Labs, for renewable energy use to get to 100%, Storage costs need to be $20 per kilowatt hour in energy capacity costs. And most current options fall well short of that target. So today we're covering another contender for the renewable energy storage throne. And once again, it comes to us from MIT. So let's talk about... Right up front, I'd like to clarify that plastic or conductive polymer-based batteries are different from the LiPo batteries that are quite common today. Yes, LiPo means lithium polymer, but the polymer here is used as the electrolyte, the thing in between the electrodes, not the electrodes themselves like the batteries we're about to discuss. The team behind this project is mostly from MIT, and I'm not kidding when I say they absolutely hate metal. Their battery foregoes any lithium, cobalt or lead immediately eliminating a lot of issues that we talk about with mining, extraction, etc. Instead, they use plastics or polymers, a special class called conductive polymers. An interesting tidbit I came across about these compounds was that the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2000 was actually awarded for work on figuring out their properties. So it must be pretty important stuff, right? Let's come back to that. Let's first take a look at what Polyjoule is promising. At a system level, they're claiming a 30% reduction in cost over lithium-ion systems. This is not only due to the fact that their cost of materials is cheaper, but also due to the fact that they don't require expensive temperature management and fire suppressant systems. They cannot self-ignite, they are non-toxic, they don't have a flammable electrolyte and are 95% recyclable. So essentially, in the previous three sentences, we've removed every downside of grid-scale batteries in just 20 seconds. But that's not all. While lithium-ion batteries struggle at low temperatures, these plastic batteries have an operating range of minus 45 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. So even extreme, barely inhabitable regions like Oymyak in Russia and New Delhi, India can be home to these batteries. And if you're about to type that this sounds too good to be true, then wait for me to finish because there's more coming. It has a power density 10 times higher than lithium-ion batteries, a lifetime of 20 to 30 years and can be manufactured in paper mills. Okay, let me check my list. Is that it? Oh yeah, and it's pH neutral. Not very sure what that means for the environment, but I'm pretty sure it's a good thing. And speaking of good things, 
Have you heard about Skillshare? Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It can help you make 2022 a year of learning, growth and connection through creativity. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, there's a class tailor-made for you. With classes for every skill level, discover what you can make. Currently, I'm going through Finding Fulfillment Using Pivots to Power Your Creative Career by Emma Gannon. It has helped me recharge my professional battery and get going. It's a class that helps you take action toward your dreams. Whether you're feeling passionate about changing careers or just want to find a way to insert a little more joy into your life, after taking this class, you'll have the actionable tips and the inspiration you need to make your own creative pivot. The first thousand people to use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. What you're saying to yourself. These are all qualitative stuff, Sarah. Give us some numbers. We hunger for math. Okay. Polyjoule is currently targeting $65 per kilowatt hour of storage for its systems. In comparison, the overall capital cost of lithium-ion batteries for a 4-hour battery system will have storage costs of $143 per kilowatt hour at the lower end and $248 per kilowatt hour at the higher end of the cost in 2030. Based on projections by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, sounds pretty sweet. So why isn't Elon Musk spending some of the $44 billion to buy this tech up for his cars. Here we encounter that most inevitable of geometric solids in battery technology, the unfortunate tetrahedron. Seriously though, read the blog. So we have three of these bases, corners, covered. That leaves only one thing to compromise, the energy density. The amount of energy you can store in a given volume of the battery, or sometimes mass, I don't know. I just use them interchangeably based on context. So for a given amount of electrical energy, these batteries take up five times as much space. So that's a no-go for mobile applications. Since we've spoken about grid storage right from the beginning, I'm sure most of you were expecting it. But while grid storage does not need a huge energy density, it is still a factor. In a presentation slash Q&A, the CEO of Polyjoule said that they are not aiming for long-term storage. Since you can always count on the sun coming out every day, being a Bangalorean, I strongly question that assumption. Though if you look at most of the grid storage today, 4 hours seems to be standard. Seasonal storage is probably best left to hydrogen. So 4 hours of energy storage sounds good. But recall this battery's property of extraordinarily high power density. The ability to charge and discharge very quickly. This property is excellent for grid balancing. The electric grid is an extremely complicated beast that has to respond instantly to changes in demand. The Tesla grid scale battery in Hornsdale, Australia made huge money for its owner Neon for doing what? Balancing the grid, not for providing backup. This also helps power plants avoid needing to ramp up and down pretty quickly which hugely reduces the amount of carbon dioxide emissions they cause. So the high power density is not just a flex. It's a really useful and somewhat unique feature compared to all the other options we have available today. Now all these wonderful features and we still don't know how it works. So let's find out, shall we? Usually we cover the technology much earlier in the video. In this case, the information was really hard to find. Here's what the website says. There are a number of polymers that are electrically conductive based on the presence of conjugated double bonds along the polymer backbone. Conjugation here means that the polymer backbone consists of alternating single and double bonds. Polyjoule happens to use a standard two-electrode electrochemical cell that contains conductive polymers, a carbon-graphene hybrid, and a non-flammable liquid electrolyte. Positive ions, or cations, and negative ions, or anions, travel back and forth between the electrodes as the cell is charged and discharged. During charging, the ions are stored in the electrode bulk through a Faradaic process called oxidation. During discharging, the ions are expelled from the electrodes through a Faradaic process called reduction. Plastics are good? I mean, this whole premise goes against everything we've been taught. Like, how do you even make plastic? 99? 99% of plastics come from fossil fuels. Recycling is fine and good, let's keep doing that. But I'd really need someone way more knowledgeable than me to work out the total cost-benefit of this whole operation. 
Imagine if we successfully electrified society, but now we have microplastics oozing out of our ears. And I haven't seen much on coulombic efficiency at all. Like if you feed this battery one kilowatt hour, then how much energy do you get back? We need more info guys. Love your website and your mission, but give us something. A cool animation, a pop-up book, a numbered list, anything. I'm not drinking the polygen potion until I get at least one of those and nor are any of my fans. Battery energy storage is expected to be a $30 billion market by 2029. And it'll be interesting to see if Polyjewel becomes one of the major players. They've got some pretty stiff competition though. Lots of smart, driven people are trying to make the renewable future a reality and it should be a fascinating journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe and join the conversation below to get more videos like this in your recommendations. For those of you who stuck around till the end, I know you have a lot of questions like what is the future of this channel? What are the different topics we'll be covering this new year in 2022? Well, the first thing on our agenda is to be more consistent with our... We're on May. We're on May. Okay, bye.